Now, is this when we have the sermon? (laughs) All right, everybody. I should tell you that when I don't write something down, that's when it's really dangerous. Lent, 40 days, the Bible. And I meant that about I used to belong to a church and we had something called self-denial and we gave something up and the money that we saved from giving it up, we gave to the work overseas. So if you can think of someone that might be going overseas in a while, You might be able to give her a couple of dollars to help with her expenses. The reading today was about the temptations. Now I'm going to ask the big question. Has anybody here ever been tempted? (laughs) Anybody? Well, some. Anybody? Every kid, right? But anyway, that's because we're thinking about it. So we've got a show of hands. So Jesus had been in the wilderness for 40 days, and he had not eaten. Now, I bet you're thinking, how could he live? Anybody here ever been to a desert? What does a desert have? Oh, sand, right, but else, what else does it have? It has water. Now, it's not just right there in front of you, but it's there. So I surmise when I read this, that although Jesus had no food, he had water. And he had time to think about his life. That's what it was about. Time to think about what was going to happen. Time to think about his ministry. So, the first temptation, as the de- it says the devil, that's the word they use, came to Jesus, was about hunger. Now, if you haven't eaten for 40 days, you'd be kind of hungry, wouldn't you? And what was the temptation? That Jesus turned that the devil would turn all those rocks into bread. All Jesus had to do was do what the devil wanted him to do. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Anybody here being hungry? Oh, there's a couple, yeah. It's hard, isn't it? So wouldn't you be tempted to eat and turn the rocks into bread? But Jesus said, man shall not live, man and woman shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's it. That's the simple thing that he said. Now then what did he What was he tempted about? He was tempted about life. The devil took him to the top of the temple and said, throw yourself down and you won't die because you're the son of God. Did Jesus do that? Absolutely not. But you know what? We sometimes do those kind of things, don't we? You've ever got in your car? I know I'm guilty. Not of drinking and driving, but I am guilty of sometimes driving faster than I should be. Thinking that, hey, I've got a car, I've got wheels, I've got gas, I can just go. Isn't that tempting God? It really is, isn't it? Now, I'll tell you a little story. It's about myself. I was about seven, and somehow I had this stupid idea that I could fly. (laughs) 
So I did what any seven-year-old did. I got an umbrella. <laughs> Makes sense to me. I went to the backyard. And we had a garage. We didn't have a car, but we had a garage. And I climbed up, and I got to the top peak of the garage, and I opened up my umbrella, and I took a running leap off that <laughs> garage. So do you think I broke anything? God is sometimes with the stupid, eh? I think, I, I think nothing happened because I was so scrawny, I just landed on my feet. <laughs> so as I'm standing there, I thought, I better put the umbrella, uh, umbrella down and take it in the house. <laughs> and as I was going in the house, my mother was coming out with the laundry to hang up. And she said to me, what are you doing with the umbrella? And I must confess that I lied. I said, I thought it might rain today, so I'd take the umbrella outside. <laughs> and I went inside, and, and that was my last time up in the air until 1961, when in a private plane, I finally got off the ground. <laughs> well, God took care of me. I should have broken my neck, or my head at least. At least I broke my brain because I smartened up. We do stupid things, all of us. But I wonder if it isn't a temptation that we do stupid things and just hope for the best. So let's try not to do no jumping off any roofs, no doing something stupid that you shouldn't do, no crossing the road when you see that car coming and you say to yourself, it's okay, I'll just run across. Sometimes it's not okay. And sometimes bad things happen. So then the devil took Jesus to the top of the world. If you want to rule everything, just follow me. Do what I want. I have a feeling that in the history of the world, that some people took that seriously, some very bad people. During the Second World War, 20 million people died because a man by the name of Hitler decided that he would rule the world. And, and he hated everyone that was not himself. He hated people that were black. They were in the death camps. He hated people that were Jewish. He hated people that were white, that were against him. And did you know that in the death camps were the Jehovah Witnesses? And you know that the people that write about the death camps will tell you that among the victims, they were the kindest of people. They reached out to everyone that they could, and they died in huge numbers. 2,500 priests also died and many other good people because someone thought they could rule the world, the world as they saw it. This very limited people. The world is for everyone. I'm so glad that I had a mother that taught me when I was a small child that just because we had different colored skin doesn't mean that we were not the same. We were all the same. We're all created by God. We have an opportunity to make a difference. And I believe that now in this day and age, it's more needed than ever that people hear the gospel, hear that God loves them. There are so many people out there, and they'll tell you, Nobody loves me. Oh, I know someone that loves you. Besides you, if you're fortunate, you have people that love you. How lucky you are. God loves you. I remember the exact day, almost 70 years ago, when I suddenly knew that God loved 
me and that there was nothing that could separate me from God. That I would hold God's hand and God would hold my hand for the rest of my life. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? To know that God will be with us today and every day. Let's remember this story. Let's go out and tell the world if they want this to be a world where people are fed, they're going to do something. In 1979, I was in Denver, Colorado. I was the lay delegate from the Church of Ecuador to the meeting of ACUSA, the Episcopal Church meeting in Denver, Colorado. During that two weeks that I was there, there was a concert put on by a man called John Denver, quite a famous guy, sings wonderfully. Why was John Denver going to do a concert with his original trio? Because one of the trio had become an Episcopal priest and he said, John, let's do something. And John Denver said, let's. So they put this concert on. It, it cost about $50 a ticket, so I said to myself, I can't go to the concert. I don't have $50. But you know what? Somebody bought me a ticket so I could go to the concert. And you know what I remember best? At the very end of the concert, John Denver stood up and he said, I want to live long enough to see that everyone in the world is fed, that no one is hungry. Oh, John, 1979, 2023, the world is still hungry. We have to do all that we can to see that no one is hungry, not only for food, but hungry for the gospel. Amen. Let us stand together as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the people. Thank you, Teresa. Please. Let us pray. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, for the children and youth in the diocese and all who minister to them, especially Reverend Michael Bruce, diocesan child and family minister, for the right Reverend John Oregon Bishop and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Western Newfoundland, ACC, for the Dean, Council, and Congregation of the Georgian, Huronia, and Bay Areas of the Eastern Synod, ELCIC, for Swift Current, St. Stephen's Anglican Church, and Reverend Beverly McLean, 
who is leading our service today. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, remembering our companion diocese of Litchfield and Mayinga, our ecumenical partners in the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, Roman Catholic covenant, and the Swift Current and Area Ministerial Association, that in faithful witness, it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit and reconciliation may grow among nations and people. We pray for justice and reconciliation between settler and indigenous peoples. We pray for God's healing touch in our lives and in the broken relationships between indigenous and newcomer peoples. We pray for the people of Ukraine and an end to the war in their country. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. We remember all in our hospital and special care homes and all who minister to them. We remember all who have asked for our prayers, whether for healing, help, or comfort, especially Marion, Glenn, Peter, Les and Verona, Agatha, Ashton, Lloyd, Ryan, Wyatt, and those known only to yourself. We pray for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, remembering the innocent caught in the midst of the war in Ukraine, remembering all the people affected by earthquakes and natural disaster in Turkey and Syria, that they may be relieved and protected we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, humbly repent, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. 
and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace. Peace of the Lord. <laughs> Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord, Lord. Preparatory hymn. is 40 days and 40 nights. own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer you this day, and through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. Now, you can either stand, sit, kneel, whichever way you feel most comfortable with. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel 
and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every day, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Keep going. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick, ate and drank with outcasts and sinners, opened the eyes of the blind, and proclaim the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night, he freely gave himself to death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this. Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Afterward, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd give it to them, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Behold what you are, become what you receive, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
And let us pray. Faithful God, in this holy bread, you increase our faith and hope and love. Lead us in the path of Christ, who is your word of life. We ask this in his name. Amen. Are we going to say it? Glory to God, whose power working us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. I think we have just really one announcement, and Teresa has it on her phone. Okay, I have an announcement that Val sent along. Um, it's just reminding everyone that World Day of Prayer is on Friday the 3rd, and the ladies need confirmation of who is attending, and please let them know by Monday in order for them to confirm the numbers that are needed for the meal. And Marilyn's going to lead the service, and other ladies are going to take part from other churches, and I agreed that I would. I thought that maybe I was the only person that had ever been to Taiwan, at least in the con Maybe not. If, you're, if you've been there, then tell me after. So I agreed that I would be the preacher at the World Day of Prayer, too. One hand, yes. Oh, you've been to Taiwan? Do you want to come up here and do it so they can see you? Oh, it will be there. Oh. Okay, thank you. And our closing hymn is The Glory of These 40 Days. Oh, and there is lunch after, and we can thank Isaiah for making us some goodies. Thank you, Isaiah.
forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.